In this video, we're going to go through the process of setting up IIS so that you can install the Status Enterprise Gateway. Specifically, this video will focus on the configuration settings needed to run the gateway on your server. Because of the nature of this process, it's essential that you're familiar with IIS. If you're unfamiliar with it, there's lots of information available on the official Microsoft site located at www.iis.net. IIS is not installed by default in Windows Server, so the very first thing we need to do is add a role to this server. To do this, I'm going to open the Server Management Console in this virtual machine I'm working with. Next, I'll select the Add Roles and Features option in the Quick Start area to add my role. This will launch the wizard for adding roles in Windows Server. This first dialog gives you information on the steps you should take to ensure that you can successfully reach your server once you're done configuring it. As the dialog makes note of, you should verify that these are configured properly before attempting to deploy the gateway on your server. Moving on, if I click the Next button, this will give us the installation type. You have two different types of installation, a roles-based installation and a remote desktop services installation. IIS is going to require a roles-based installation as we're only dealing with a single server, so I'll go ahead and click the Next button to move on to the next part. This portion of the dialog allows you to choose the server you want to install the role on. Unless you're working with a server farm or something like an enterprise-level hardware infrastructure, you'll probably only see one server available. If you do have multiple servers listed, make sure you select the right one. Since I only have one server listed, I'll click Next one more time, and now we can look at the roles available for install. In this case, we need to find the web server role so we can install IIS. So I'll scroll through the list now and select it from the list. You'll see that a dialog has popped up asking me if I want to include the management console since it's required in order to use IIS. So I'll click the Add Features button, then click Next to continue. This portion of the dialog is where we'll choose the features that are needed by IIS. The one feature we need to choose from this list is under the .NET Framework 4.5 Features group specifically the ASP.NET 4.5 option. So I'll expand that and then check it. I'll click Next one more time. And this dialog will give us information about the web server role. It also provides you with some things you should take into account when setting up your server. Since there's no information here we need to be concerned with, I'll click the Next button so we can continue. Now we can choose the role services for IIS. Although there's a lot of services here, we only need a handful of them. First, let's find the application development grouping. In here, we need to make sure that .NET Extensibility 4.5 is checked. Next, we'll check the ASP.NET 4.5 option, and when I click this, it will tell me that the ISAPI filters and extensions are needed as well. So I'll click the Add Features button. Next, we'll need the WebSocket protocol as well, so I'm going to check that, and we're ready to go to the next part of the configuration wizard. This portion of the dialog will give you a chance to review everything you've selected and make changes if you need to. There's also a checkbox for restarting the server if anything you're installing requires it. Since it's always a good idea to restart, I'll check this option. A dialog will pop up telling me that the server will automatically restart without notifications. Since this is acceptable, I'll click Yes, then click the Install button. At this point, I'm going to cut to the part where IIS is configured. Then I'll install Status Enterprise so we can test this, but I don't want you to have to sit through the entire process as there's nothing to discuss. So now the process of installing IIS is complete. 
I've also taken the liberty of installing Status Enterprise so we can see if the gateway will load. So I'm going to open the web browser, then enter the URL for the gateway. It looks like things are working as intended. We've received the login page, which means that our setup is ready to go. In closing, Status Enterprise is a powerful, easy-to-use tool that lets you design once and deploy multiple times. For more information about Status Enterprise, please visit us on the web at www.scada.com.